Okay, last run here. I've had to restart like twice, so hopefully I can make it through. Uh, but we are here for the weekly email, and I just want to make one last one last video. You're probably hoping to get get through the short week without me, but I won't let that happen. There's always more to talk about. So, uh, so the last couple of weeks we talked about where in the Bible does it talk about confession, and then also where where do Catholics get this notion that they have to work for their salvation? Okay, uh, so both those things we covered in the last videos. Uh, which I thought were pretty helpful, especially living in a town of mostly Protestant people, and they might ask us those questions. So the, the third one that we're going to talk about is our devotion to Mary. So Mary's awesome, you can see. This is one of the best books that you're going to find on uh, uh, devotion to her. So Louis de Montfort was, St. Louis de Montfort was a, uh, he was just well-known, famous for spreading Marian devotion. And he put this book together, I think, ah, I can't remember when he lived, probably lived in the, probably like 200 years ago. Maybe more, I don't know. Um, but but anyways, he compiled this book. It's just basically story after story of uh, these different and miraculous events that have happened in history, and they've been recorded. And so one of these, you might be kind of like, you know, well, I don't know if I believe that, but there's like 50 of them. And so after a while, you're like, well, I guess at least maybe some of this probably happened. Um, but, um, but I've used it a lot, and it's kind of helped me. So... So we're going to just read the story really quick. It's a, a couple uh, a couple paragraphs, and then um, I'll explain a little bit why we, uh, from there, why we turn to Mary. Okay, so this is uh, where it starts. Whatever you do, do not be like a, a certain pious but self-willed lady in Rome who uh, so often referred to when speaking about the rosary. She was so devout and so fervent that she put to shame by her holy life even the strictest religious in the church. Having decided to ask St. Dominic's advice about her spiritual life, she asked him to hear her confession. For penance, he gave her one whole rosary to say and advised her to say it every day. She said that she had no time to say it, excusing herself on the grounds that she made the stations of Rome every day. She wore sackcloth and also a hair shirt. She gave herself the discipline several times a week. Uh, and I believe the discipline is like when you beat yourself. I don't know. Uh, I could be wrong on that. Uh, and carried out so many other penances and fasted so much. St. Dominic urged her over and over again to take his advice and say the rosary, but she would not hear of it. She left the confessional horrified at his tactics of this new spiritual director who had tried so hard to persuade her to take on a devotion that was not at all to her liking. Later on, she was in prayer, and she fell into an ecstasy and had a vision of her soul appearing before our Lord's judgment seat. St. Michael put all her penances and other, uh, and other prayers into one balance of the scale, and all her sins and imperfections onto the other. The tray of her good works was greatly outweighed by that of her sins and imperfections. Filled with terror, she cried for mercy, imploring the help of the Blessed Virgin. Her gracious advocate, who took the one and only rosary that she had said for her penance and dropped it into the tray of her good works, and dropped it into the tray of her good works. This one, this one rosary was so heavy it weighed more than all her sins as well as all her good works. Our Lady then reproved her for having refused to follow the counsel of her servant Dominic, and for not saying the rosary every day. As soon as she came to herself, she rushed and threw herself at the feet of St. Dominic and told him all that had happened. Uh, so, so yeah, so that was just recorded. So I think that, uh, I love that story. It just kind of goes to show that uh, two things. Uh, when we die, we're going to see a heck of a lot more than uh, what we think we're going to or what we kind of previously conceived judgment to be. Um, but we're going to see every action and every thought and every decision uh, play it out and how that impacts those around us until the end of time. So like the full weight of our actions as human being is going to be for both good and bad, right? So depending on how we live, it's going to be, it's going to be um, tremendous in both respects, okay? But uh, it just goes to show you how much sin weighs, like a single sin, you know, collectively over years and years and years and years. I mean, there's people that you know, I'm sure I've damaged in the past and they carry that weight because it happens to me, right? There's people that have damaged me and I carry that weight, you know? Uh, and so, so yeah, when, when our lives are being, you know, in the scales, um, we would want kind of the best, like if we had a chance to have the very best uh, lawyer in the entire world, 
uh, just to kind of be at our side, defending us and pleading, pleading our cause and pleading for uh, a case of why we, uh, we, desi- we, we deserve not to be guilty. Uh, and that would, that would make sense, right? We would just want to have that person by our side. And so when we pray in general, we're not, we're not praying uh, and we're not worshiping Mary. That's kind of a, a term that's thrown around, which is completely false. If someone just says, well, we don't like Catholicism because they wor- worship Mary. That's like not what we believe, okay? I've never seen somebody in front of a statue like just like bowing down and saying, oh, divine mother, you know, like the, 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 the Mary, of, or, you know, Mary creator of the universe, right? You'd have to be pretty dumb to kind of just like make that, uh, make that assessment. Um, uh, now it can happen, but it's not, uh, it's not like, it, that's not what the church encourages. But when we pray, Mary stands next to us and our prayers, uh, she takes our, our prayers and then presents them to the Father. Uh, so I like to use this example with my faith formation students that uh, when I was a kid, when I was growing up, I would never go to dad for stuff. I'd always go to mom. And I'd ask him, hey, uh, mom, can you know we go to 7-Eleven and get snacks or whatever? And she's like, yeah, sure. Uh, with my dad, he'd always say uh, most of the time, he would say, yeah, sure, we can, but you'd have to earn it. You'd have to go do something like that. With my mom, it was always just like, okay, if she was asking, it was always free. Uh, so I, I learned that pretty quick as a boy. I was like, okay, this is the way uh, to, to get things the easiest. And I asked him, like, why is that, right? Because um, we're asking for the same thing, but my mom's relationship with my dad carries a certain weight, right? It carries, she has a certain authority. She has a certain relationship with my dad, which is different than mine. Okay, so when I am with Mary, when I'm asking with Mary, um, uh, with her intercession, uh, for you know the Father, it's always going to the Father, and Mary's one desire is to bring us to God, bring her clo- bring us closest to her Son, uh, and so if we do that, we just have much more of a of a uh, of an influence. Our prayers are much more impactful, uh, so that makes sense on a natural scale. Uh, so supernaturally, it's the same thing. She's our spiritual mother, uh, and she desires to help us, right? And so. That is something we can choose. And just kind of looking at the story, too, um, uh, when we say the rosary, that weight of all the good works that we could do in a lifetime combined in, in a single rosary when she was saying 100, she was talking about 150 Hail Marys. But that weight, imagine if we were to do that for our entire lives. Would we really have to worry on the last day about... Um, you know, where we, where we would go. Uh, the saints say that no soul who perseveres in praying the rosary has ever been damned, right? So for me, I look at eternity and it's like, whoa, that's a really big deal, right? Like that's a huge deal. And, um, and so I don't want to miss the opportunity, right? So I say the rosary, you know, if, if it costs me my life, I'm going to get through that thing every day because it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's, we want to be as prepared as possible. You know, I, I like to say that if, if the rosary doesn't work, then my scapula will, will um, be another way that Our Lady can kind of assist me on the last day. Or if that doesn't work, I've done the same bridge of prayers. If that doesn't work, I go to Mass, right? Like, and that might seem a little excessive, but at the same time, it's like, can we be excessive when we're planning for our eternity? Like when we, when we plan for uh, retirement, you know, we're all saving up for that. Um, how insignificant is that, right? 20 years compared to 20 million years, you know, uh, which is just a drop in the bucket compared to eternity. Uh, and the church actually teaches that the devil is most aggressive in the final moments of our lives uh, just because this is his last chance, right? And so he tempts us to despair in God's mercy. Uh, and so that alone, we could, we could fall away from God's loving arms in that last moment, um, and uh, so we want to be prepared as possible. And we say the rosary every day. We want to worry about that. The devil will be chained, but we want to chain him, right? We don't want to wait until that last moment to try and get our stuff together and, and get ready. So, uh, so that is kind of all that I have to say. There's more to be said there, but uh, we can cut it off because we're at 10 minutes. All right, God bless you. Have a great Thanksgiving and say a prayer for all those traveling. All right, have a great day. Bye.